I'm finally making the switch and saying goodbye to the Goatee AM4 platform. I just want to say mad respect to AMD for supporting it for as long as they did, and they're still supporting it to this day. I've had an AMD since my very first custom build. It was a Ryzen 5 3600 and a 1660 Super. I then upgraded to a Ryzen 9 3900X and an RTX 3060 Ti. I then made another upgrade to the Ryzen 9 5900X and an RTX 3080. And that's the system I'm currently using right now. But not for long, because today I'm making another upgrade, but this time I'm switching teams. Goodbye AMD and hello to the new Intel i9 14900K. This thing is going to be a beast. This video is sponsored by Super CDK. I've been using them to activate Windows on all my computer builds. They have Windows 10 and Windows 11 keys. Just add whatever key you want to your cart. And before you check out, be sure to apply the discount code SPLA to save some extra money. And to activate the key, you just copy and paste it straight into the window activation settings on your computer. Thank you Super CDK for sponsoring this video and be sure to visit them down below. So what am I upgrading from? Well, here it is. This is my main PC, for now at least. I'm gonna be upgrading everything in this build except the GPU, so stay till the end to see the difference in performance numbers. The part selection in this build is kind of weird. For the CPU, it's a Ryzen 9 5900X, and it's only a 12 core processor, which sounds really small compared to what the i9 brings to the table. The motherboard in the build is a B450 board. Yep, I went budget, baby. And the RAM is a 32 gigabyte kit from T-Force and it's clocked at 3600 megahertz. My graphics card is the EVGA for the Win 3 RTX 3080 and I have about three terabytes of NVMe storage and it's all inside this Gamdius Nezo P1 case with RGB. I remember when I first built this computer and I was buying all the original parts, that 5900X, man, that thing made me so excited. I was so happy to finally have a modern high-end processor. And at the time it was quite the upgrade for me because I was editing on my Windows PC, which was running a Ryzen 9 3900X. So I was super excited to upgrade. And well, I find myself upgrading again. But why is that? I recently took my first ever trip to Micro Center and you know I couldn't leave empty handed. I had to buy something. They are known for their CPU combo deals so that's exactly what I picked myself up. I got that i9-14900K. It is the most high end and new processor out right now for consumers. Saying it's the best would be subjective. Specs wise, it is a beast. Price to performance wise, eh, not so much. It's basically just a faster 13th gen i9 with the new name. But that i9 was bundled with the MSI Z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard. The motherboard is pretty nice. It has really nice VRMs, a total of four M.2 slots, four RAM slots, and a decent rear IO. It's a really solid motherboard. Then the bundle also came with a kit of RAM. I had the option to choose between 64 gigabytes or 32, and I just settled with the 32 gigabyte kit. It's two sticks from G-Skill, and the timings on these things, man, they're blazing fast. This is my first ever DDR5 PC build, so I'm freaking excited. Okay, that motherboard combo deal wasn't the only thing I bought. I was doing some walking around Micro Center, and I stumbled across the SSDs. Well, this 2TB Samsung 980 Pro, it's a Gen 4 NVMe SSD with insane read and write speeds, and I couldn't pass it up for just a hundred bucks. The reason it was a hundred dollars is because I bought that CPU combo deal, so they did a hundred bucks off of the SSD. So in total, for my first ever trip to Micro Center, I spent about 900 bucks, which isn't bad at all. But now, let's build my new computer.
the build is done and I just want to say I love how it turned out. In the previous case, I didn't use cable extensions, but this time I made sure to use them and it really tied everything together. It's so sleek and it's basically almost all black. Maybe in the future I'll do a completely blacked out build with no RGB. I think that would look really sick. Anyways, let's go ahead and compare this PC's performance to my last computer. The first game I compared was Fortnite. On my 5900X system, I tested both 1440p and 1080p with performance mode enabled. At 1440p, it averaged 347 FPS, and at 1080p it averaged 401. Now with the new system, we saw a nice bump in the FPS numbers when testing at 1440p. It actually averaged 368 FPS, but when I switched the resolution to 1080p, we actually averaged a little bit less, but only by a few frames. Overall, it played really smooth. The frame graph was basically aligned, which is kind of weird to see for me, especially in Fortnite. So although we didn't see a huge difference in the average FPS, we did, however, get a nice increase in the 1% low numbers with the 14900K. Now in Apex Legends, I tested both systems at 1440p with basically all low settings. The Ryzen 9 5900X averaged 286 FPS, and then oddly enough, the 14900K averaged 275. I tested it about four different times and it kept getting less than the 5900X, but just like in Fortnite, the 1% lows are better with the 14900K. Considering Apex has a 300 FPS limit you can't override, Averaging 275 at 1440p isn't terrible, and if you are playing Apex Legends, it's most likely at 1080p, so in that case, you would get closer to that 300 FPS limit. Now for my most favorite game ever, Warzone. AMD averaged 121 FPS at 1440p with recommended settings, and Team Intel absolutely smacked AMD out of the park. The 14900K averaged 169 FPS and the 1% lows was literally higher than the average FPS on my old system. Good thing this is my most favorite game and I play it all the time. So in easier to run esports titles, the results are pretty close, but the 14900K is obviously better. Now in AAA titles, the results are basically the same as the esports titles, but let's just take a look. Out of the few AAA titles I tested, Borderlands 3 saw the most improvement between both systems. AMD averaged 120 FPS, and Team Blue averaged 150 FPS. Cyberpunk at 1440p with high settings, the i9 walked away with an average of 97, and the Ryzen 9 was trailing behind by five frames. But the huge difference is once again in those 1% low numbers. It makes everything smoother, especially when you turn on the ray tracing. When I tested the Ryzen 9 with ray tracing overdrive, it was all choppy and only averaged 43 FPS. When I ran it on the new system, almost all the choppiness was gone. Sure, it was still under 60 FPS, but at least the 1% low wasn't under 30 FPS. And I think that's really what helped smooth out the gameplay. Last game was Hogwarts Legacy, and the results were super close. The first time I tested, it averaged 87 FPS, and the second time it averaged 89. But how were the 1% lows? They were also really close, 45 and 49. So all in all, do you think this upgrade was worth it? I think it was worth it. And when doing the upgrade, I wasn't expecting a huge bump in FPS numbers because I wasn't upgrading the GPU. I was, however, expecting the games to run smoother, which they did. So I count that as a successful upgrade. And now I'm on DDR5. Drop your thoughts in the comments down below and also leave any feedback for this video. And if you happen to enjoy the video, then smash that like button, subscribe if you loved it, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.